go with second quarter action as you see the Seminole cheerleaders with a little bit something to cheer about now Jim as Florida State is on a drive out the Nebraska 44 with the Cornhuskers leading at 7 nothing we start the second quarter this will be a first and 10 for Florida State stock still at quarterback the pitch back to Ricky Williams out of the eye formation Williams avoids two tacklers and gets back to the line of scrimmage and you know what that was a great run Williams could have been tackled for a big loss let's take a look at it again all right let's see this good run by Ricky Williams again as he breaks some tackles Ricky only weighs about 165 pounds but he has great speed and he got out of one tackle and just kept his feet moving which is what you got to do when these guys grab you and turn what could have been a loss into uh, uh, no gain. All right, Russell Gary, number nine, uh, was the man who finally stopped Williams. Actually, they say uh, Williams did lose a yard, although it's not quite as much as a yard. Call it second and 11 for the record. Stock still straight back to throw. Got some time. He's going to run with it now. Stock still over the 45, down to the 41 yard line. A gain of about three. It appeared that Rick was going to get some big yardage, but Nebraska came up tough to close it down in the person of their big defensive end, and that would be number 96, Jimmy Williams. And they, there was just nothing open downfield. You see Zeke Moat running a play in from the sideline. And big play here, Jim. This is a big play. Seminoles really need to get down there and, and get something on the board. They mark the ball at the Nebraska 42. It'll be third down and eight for Florida State. Hardis Johnson, Phil Williams split to the bottom of your screen. They are wide. You can't see them. They're not in the picture right now. There goes Williams in motion. Stock still. Straight back to throw out of the backfield now to uh, Whiting, and he'll go nowhere but back to midfield. Nice play there by the Nebraska defense diagnosing that play. Kim Baker, the man who was guilty of a clip a little bit earlier in the ball game. One of the reasons this didn't go, they dropped back to a 4-4, and the linebackers were just sitting back there reading it. They were looking to see what the running back was going to do, and when Whiting turned up field, they knew he was going to catch it, and they were right there. Strong side linebacker Kim Baker shuts down another Seminole drive with 13-10 left in the half at 7-0, and Ron Stark is back to punt. Back there is Dave Legal and Rick Lindquist to receive for the Big Red at the Nebraska 10-yard line. Start gets it away, almost blocked. Lindquist is signaling fair catch, and he's down at the 12-yard line where Nebraska will take it first down and 10 yards to go. Seminole certainly could use a break down here. They definitely need to keep Nebraska down at this end and try to get some decent field position as the Seminole defense has played fairly well today, Tom. Uh, I think that they've already earned some respect from this Nebraska crowd. Frankly, the Nebraska fans didn't know much about FSU at all. They just expected to come in here and see another blowout, I think. I don't think it's going to be that way, although football games can turn around in a hurry, but uh, Florida State is proving the quality of its defense so far today. You're right. Nebraska has had the one drive, but that's been it. 7 nothing to score. First and 10 now from the 12. Quinn, the pitch back, and it goes to the eye back in the formation, and that would be number 30, Craig Johnson. Craig Johnson and Roger Craig are the two eye backs that spell Jarvis Redwine, and uh, Jarvis doesn't spend much time on the sideline. He carried 34 times last week against Penn State. They like to get the ball to him as much as they can, but he's uh, still out, I believe. Gain of four yards on the play by Craig Johnson. will be second down at six. The ball spotted on the Husker 16-yard line. Again, that eye formation so familiar to defenses who try and stop Nebraska. Quinn pitches out, and the pitch out is going to go for the first down. Going to go to number 33, Anthony Steeles. The 5'9 junior out of Sacramento, California, has it first and 10 if they mark the ball where his progress stopped, and they will. Uh, Cornhusker first down and a big one. That's precisely what killed Penn State last week. No defensive line penetration there. The quarterback had time to maneuver. Sometimes he'll reverse pivot. Sometimes he'll just do a straight pivot. Sometimes he fakes to the fullback. And, you know, they just do so much off there if they have time to do it. The first and 10 now. They mark it at the Cornhusker 24-yard line. Flanked wide to the left-hand side is Todd Brown. And back to throw is Quinn again on first down. Intercepted. Intercepted by Bonasort, I believe. Monk Bonasort has it in Nebraska territory at the 33-yard line. That is the fourth interception of the year against Jeff Quinn. And Bonasort was all along. And Monk Bonasort, as you watch the replay, sets a career reception record with 13 for FSU. And, of course, he had eight last year as he made third-team All-American. And Bonasort cuts back and, and uh, stumbles. There is a penalty flag, but I believe it's after the interception had already been made. 
And it is against Nebraska. Big break. Yes, they're going to move this ball back even further. It is a personal foul against Nebraska after the interception. And that big red crowd there, Jim, is kind of quiet. The ball is right now at the Nebraska 33. We've got 11.37 left in the half. And the referee says, let's march it back there another 15 yards. So the Seminoles with a big break make that another 10 yards. And the ball now is on the, oh, it is 15 yards. I'll add it up right. It's on the 18-yard line. First and 10 from the 18. The crowd's coming alive trying to shake this Seminole offense. But they're knocking on the door, and they need to get it in. I'll tell you, they need to come away with this with no less than three points. they got to get on the board somehow. All right, first and 10 Seminoles. The ball on the Nebraska 18. The pitch out to Platt, who's in the game. Platt on the reverse to McKennedy. Swan for a big loss. Back to the 29-yard line. And Jimmy Williams again, the defensive end, read that play perfectly. All right, uh, let's see this reverse not work because Jimmy Williams stayed at home like a defensive end should there. He was not suckered in. Too bad he didn't hand off to Platt because it looked like Platt was going to have some running room outside. Oh, yeah, Platt had plenty of room to roll, but in, instead it's a 10-yard loss back to the 28-yard line. It'll be second down and 20 now. And Stockstill's got to throw it. Here come the Huskers on the blitz. Stockstill is set for another loss back to the 38-yard line. Now well, Nebraska knew he had to pass the ball, Jim, and they're coming in droves. All right, we've got a replay on it. They're double covering both wide receivers, and the tight end was not able to get open, and the defense has hind line, and then you see Waxter, and Waxter got him right there and slowed him up, and then uh, Williams put the hit on him. Well, I tell you, this has got to be demoralizing to the Florida State defense to play so well and have the offense being bollocked up like they are. They've taken themselves out of field goal range now. They've got to get a big play here. They're down and 30. Another 10-yard loss on that play. Stock still straight back to throw. He's got some time now. Looking and he's sacked again. Back at the 45-yard line. And I'll tell you, you can't have all day back there. Stock still had the time, but nobody was open. And making the tackle is Gary Nelson, number 92. They're able to rush four men, drop seven back, and still get the job done defensively. And he's just looking down there and seeing nothing but red surrounding every one of his receivers. And he can't just put it up for grabs. He's uh, just got to eat it. Ron Stark will now try and use the punt as a weapon. He'll try and nail it coffin corner style. Not a rush to speak of. He's going for the left corner. Let's see how successful Stark is. It's a pretty good-looking punt, and it is out of bounds. Where is it? On the two? Let's see where they mark it. Out of bounds on the Cornhusker three-yard line or thereabouts. Three or four-yard line. A great job by Ron Stark, who's been doing it all year long. Simply great kick by Stark. Stark averaging 46.2 yards a kick on 21 punts. 9.36 left to go in the first half. The score, Nebraska 7, Florida State nothing. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. The uh, football officials neglected to hold the game up while we were away. They marked that ball after the punt on the 20-yard line. They said it was a touchback. It's sort of a questionable call. So Nebraska has run two plays from their 20, and they have gained eight yards. It's third down and two at the 28-yard line. That's your situation. We apologize for missing the two plays, but the officials on the field would not stop when they were supposed to. So it is third down and two. The pitch out to Redwine being contained, and now he goes for a hole. Is open. Red line inside the 45. He fumbles the football, but they say he's down right there. Jarvis Redwine, first and 10 for Nebraska. Let's take a look at a play that really hurts the Seminoles. The Seminoles had them down there deep in their own territory after failing to score, and they let Redwine watch him maneuver. All right, he cuts in and eludes the defensive tackle. Bonasort's off balance there. Bonasort is a safety. Once a guy gets past the safety, you're in big trouble, especially if he has that kind of speed. You see them carrying him, uh, and Arthur Scott trying to get him down there, and finally tripped him up by grabbing his shoe. First and 10, Nebraska at the Florida State 42-yard line. After that big run by Redwine, Quinn back to pass, looking for his tight end. Now it's his split end. That is McCready. McCready inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line, and Keith Jones brings him down there for a gain of about four. It's a short gainer, but they're mixing it up so well, and you start getting leery of these little passes like this and all of a sudden there's Redwine with the ball. Andre Franklin has not carried the ball that much and he's kind of devastating up in the middle too. He certainly is. Into the game for Nebraska now on offense splitting out to the top of the screen. 
is number 33, Anthony Steeles. He's a dangerous receiver. It'll be second down and six. Quinn with the ball. Now the pitch out to Redwine. Redwine is in the open field. Jarvis Redwine out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. He's out of bounds. Oh, now, now they say he stepped out at the 14-yard line. We're going to watch Marvelous Jarvis in action again as he pitches it out and see him coming around to linebacker Kurowski. When you miss a tackle like that, they're not, never going to have the uh, speed to catch up with him when he gets out there. Keith Jones trying to get him. He stepped out of bounds back upfield. So it's first and ten now after another big round gainer by Redwine. First and ten for the big red of Nebraska at the Florida State 14. The Huskers leading seven to nothing. It's been the Nebraska defense, which has really been impressive, though. They give to Andre Franklin. Franklin, the up back in the eye, and he is stopped very abruptly by Arthur Scott and a host of other Seminoles. Maybe give him a yard gain. You, you just said a mouthful there. What has surprised me has been the Nebraska defense. We knew they had a great offense. We knew it's going to be hard to contain them. But the defense has really bottled up the Seminoles. And when the Seminoles got it to the 18, as you see Andre Franklin Day and his mother, I believe, and a brother are here. That's right. Game. North Platte, Nebraska, one of the surrounding communities in the Lincoln area, giving Andre Franklin his own day. And a pickup of two by Franklin on that last carry. It's second down and eight. Jeff Quinn rolling to his left, looking for the touchdown, and it is incomplete. Oh, I'll tell you, in and out of the hands of John Noonan, who has really impressed me this afternoon, but he was wide open. He beat Keith Jones, and he dropped it. Here's a big break, because he was open. Franklin, uh, frankly, uh, Jarvis Redwine was open out there, too, had he elected to flare it to him. He would have been one-on-one. -on -one. That's a dangerous situation. I believe this is the first time that Jarvis Redwine's mother has been in a Nebraska game, and she's yep. here today to watch him play. Oh, that's all he needs is that inspiration, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. All right, third down and eight. The ball is still marked at the Seminole 12-yard line. Big play here for the Florida State defense. So they try and stop Nebraska from adding on a second touchdown. Jeff Quinn, the pass again, the same route, touchdown! Second touchdown catch of the day. Split in Todd Brown will make this touchdown reception, and you'll notice how badly Nebraska has the Seminole defense right at this moment off balance. They've been able to get red line outside, and they've been able to do a few things on short passes, and that you can't get more open than that. No, you can't. I'll tell you, that's the exact same pattern that Noonan ran the last play. And you hate to pick on anybody, but Keith Jones uh, was over there. He got beat. He was one-on-one -on -one with a wide receiver. That's tough. All right, into attempt the extra point now is Seibel. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With 6.30 left in the first half, the score, Nebraska 14, Florida State nothing. Back to Lincoln, Nebraska. I hope you like red because we have enough of that in the stadium. There's some garnet and gold, the Florida State cheerleaders, but they're kind of down the dumps right now, trailing 14 to nothing. Let's see if the Seminoles can come back and get something on the board before the first half ends. 6.30 left in the first half. And it's been the combination of Jeff Quinn to Todd Brown for two touchdowns in the Nebraska lead. Kevin Seibel moving into the ball now. A high end over end kick. And back to receive Sam Flatt is at the goal line. Now he takes it at the six. Sam Flatt got some running room. And Flatt is up over the 20 to the 27-yard line. So good operating room and a good run back by Sam Flatt. Well, it's all on the offensive shoulders right now. They've got to get down there and get something on the board. If you go in scoreless, two touchdowns, three touchdowns behind at halftime, well, you can just about hang it up here. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the big uh, the big uh, series was the last time down when Florida State had it first and 10 at the Nebraska 18 and came away with nothing, marched steadily backwards. That was, the, I think, the biggest series of the ball game so far. All right, first and 10 for Florida State. On their own 28-yard line, says the scoreboard. Stock still on the give to the draw play. The draw play to Platt. And Sam Platt is up for good yardage, up to the 29-yard line. Make that the 34-yard line. All right, watch the blocking of the center. Jerry Coleman, a walk-on who's not even on scholarship. See him knock that man down. That made that play right there. Jerry Coleman, who had never played a down of a varsity game before, has done a super job. He hadn't missed messed up one snap. What a way to break in, huh? Right. Against Nebraska at Lincoln. Gain of six on the play, second down and four. In motion goes Dennis McKinnon. The pitch out now to Sam Flatt as he tries to turn the left end, and he does so successfully up to the 40-yard line. First and ten Seminoles, but now the Nebraska defense is content to let Florida State rip off some yardage on the ground because the clock is, uh, well, it's 545 and we'll be running in a moment. Sam Platt has come back firing because he was demoted to second string, be not so much on uh, the basis of his efforts, but because Ricky Williams had played real well. And now Platt, 
uh, really wants to win that job back. He looked pretty good on those two runs. Yes, he did. Pretty good blocking also. First and 10 Seminoles at their own 40-yard line. 14 to nothing, Nebraska. Tom Mees in company with Jim Crosby at Memorial Stadium. And back to pass is Stockstill. He's got Hardis Johnson. It is no good. Incomplete. Good play that time by Johnson because Nebraska just missed an interception. Rodney Lewis, the left cornerback, was back there. And uh, the receiver, Johnson, knocked the ball away from him. All right, on the replay, we'll see just how closely this came to being an interception as Stockstill threw it a little bit short as you see Johnson having to slow down and come back and it was right in the hands and uh, the defender Lewis. didn't put it away. No, he didn't. I'll tell you what, that ball is thrown about three yards further downfield and Hardis may have a touchdown. That's true. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the 40. Again, Stock still back to throw. He's being yes. rushed. He's got to get rid of it. It is complete over the middle of the flat. A nice completion for near the first down, but not quite. Up to just short of midfield. Let's call it the 49. All right, they blitzed the linebacker that time, and we'll see it again here on the replay. And one thing that, uh, yeah, Brent Williams was the linebacker who blitzed in. Watch him, number 66, coming in the left side of your screen. And Stock still got it away to the running back. And that's what you got to do to cut down this rush. I mean, that rush has just been firing in there, not giving him a time to do anything. 4.49, the clock running. There's a timeout on the field with a score. Nebraska 14, Florida State nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Tom Bees with Jim Crosby back at Lincoln's Memorial Stadium. And as we return to live action, Sam Platt picking up the first down on a pitch out from Stockstill after that Florida State timeout. It'll be first and 10 at the Nebraska 49-yard line as Will Williams comes in to replace Barry Voltapetti, wearing number 99 today. They put Voltapetti in a tight end uh, when they are going to run a running play. And the Seminoles, if they could score here, score a touchdown, they're back in it, Tom. Oh, sure. Well, they're back. They're not out of it yet anyway, by any means. Only 14 nothing. Stockstill rolling to his right now. He's going to keep it. He's got some running room. Stockstill to the 40, and Stockstill picks up the first down, I believe. It is either right at the stick or right beyond it. Let's see where they mark it. On the replay, we'll check it out as they try to see if he made a first down or not. They're going to move the chains up. He did make a first down. Rick Stockstill looking downfield and seeing a now familiar picture. Everybody covered. He decides that he'll loosen them up with a run. And there's Brent Williams coming over. And the, de the defensive back, uh, number 41, coming up to make the hit. All right, first and 10 Seminoles at the Husker 38-yard line. Nice run by Stockstill. Stock still over to Sam Platt, who's now in there at tailback, and Platt has stopped after a yard or two gain. Jimmy Williams is in there, and he is uh, accompanied by several Cornhuskers, including Sammy Sims, number six. They're starting to mix the pass and the run, as you see Bobby Bowden sending Phil Williams in from the sideline with a play. All right, it'll be second down and nine as they give Platt only one yard gain on that play. That could have been a decoy for a passing play. We'll see. The clock running, 3.30 left to go on the first half. 14 nothing, Nebraska. Stock still. No bones about it this time. He's going to throw. Now he's under a rush. Gets away from Sims. Unloads it. Complete. Complete to Platt. And Platt is inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. He's got another first down. Was a good job of improvising there, as we'll see Rick Stockstill on the replay get out of the grasp of some tacklers and throw it to Sam Platt. And... The Seminoles are on the move. Ricky Stockstill looks, and he just gets away from uh, the Monster Man, who they were blitzing once again up there. And he throws it to Platt. Platt gets a nice gainer. First down. The officials start the clock again. We have three minutes, five seconds, and running. And left to go in the first half. Tom Mees with Jim Crosby from Memorial Stadium, the 108th consecutive sellout here in Lincoln. And why not? The Huskers have been a national power for a long time, but the Seminoles trying to get on the board. First and 10. McKinnon is the man in motion. And Stockstill again back to throw. Got some time over the middle. Complete the flat. He puts it away and he's down to the 20-yard line. Gain of seven on the play for Sam Flat. It's nice to see them working Platt into some uh, pass patterns now because he was a wide receiver, caught 32 passes the past two years as a wide receiver, so he gives an extra dimension when he's in there at a running back. Well, the Nebraska defense is being tested now. This is a concerted drive by the Seminoles. After taking the kickoff, following the second Nebraska touchdown, these kids are playing well on this drive. Let's hope they can get into the end zone for a score. Second down and three, and the give is to Platt. Out of the eye, back formation. He may have another first down. I'll tell you, it's becoming the Sam Platt show as they mark it at the 17. 
That should be a first down, Jim. Sam likes to carry it a lot. He likes to be in the action. Uh, wherever the action is, that's where Sam wants to be. And they're going to have to measure. This one is pretty close. Yeah, we'll take, we'll keep it here and take a look at the measurement with two minutes, two seconds left to go in the first half. Florida State has used one of its three timeouts. So the Seminoles have two more to go on uh, in this half. And it is a first and 10 for Florida State at the Nebraska 17 yard line. All right, now the last time Florida State got down this, uh, as you see where we are in this beautiful press box here at Nebraska, the last time the Seminoles got down this far, Jim, they went backwards. Can't do that now. That's right, they need seven. Yeah, three, well three is three, but seven would get you right back into the thick of this game. The split receivers are McKinnon to the top of your screen, Hardis Johnson to the bottom. Michael Whiting and Sam Flat, the running backs. Stock still bakes the flat. Got some time. Looking for the touchdown on the end zone. It is incomplete. Intended for Hardis Johnson, but back there defending was Rick Lindquist. Okay. If it had been a little bit farther, it might have been a touchdown there. And we'll have a replay of it as Hardis Johnson uh, in the corner of the end zone. Nice fake, little play action. And Stocksell is looking, throwing to his right, and he just couldn't quite get it to Hardis. And it could have been a reception or an interception or anything there as they fight for it. That'll stop the clock. 1.39 left to go on the half. Both split receivers down to the top of the screen. Second and 10. And the give on the running play to Mike Whiting. He fumbles but falls back on top of it. I believe he's, he has it. Yes, he does. And actually picks up a couple of yards down to the 14. It's still Florida State ball. That's eating up valuable time. We're less than a minute and a half now, Tom. And this is a big play. They got to try to get it in on this one. If, don't, if they don't, they'll have to settle for a field goal. They're down and eight. Very big plays. The clock running down. 115 and running here in the first half. Bill Williams leaves the ball game as McKinnon comes in with the play from Bobby Bowden. A minute, five seconds. 14 to nothing to score. Third and eight. They got to get it down to about the seven. Stock still. Going long. Intended and incomplete intended for McKinnon in the end zone. That was an exciting one. Yes, it was. We'll watch Dennis McKinnon once again. They hit a pass just like that against East Carolina for a touchdown, and you see Stockstill's throw is just over the outstretched fingertips of Dennis McKinnon. So Bill Capice comes on to see if he can tack at least three points out of this drive on the board and get the Seminoles on. The ball will be kicked from the 22-yard line. It's a 32-yard attempt angled to the right. The snap is good, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 54 seconds left in the first half, the score in Nebraska 14 and Florida State 3. A 32-yard field goal by Bill Capiz with 54 seconds left in the first half has put the Seminoles on the board. The score now, Nebraska 14, Florida State 3. I'm Tom Mees with Jim Crosby. And Capiz is set to kick off now from left to right. Anthony Steele's number 33 and Ricky Simmons number 7 standing at the Cornhusker goal line to return this kickoff. And as soon as the referee blows the whistle, and he does, we're set to go. So here comes Capice into the ball. It's a high end over ender. It will go deep in the end zone, and Simmons drops it in the end zone. He'll have to down it, which he does. It's a touchback, first and 10 for Nebraska on their 20. So at least the offense was able to tack three points on Jim at the end of that last drive. Maybe they'll be able to go in and regroup and figure out how they can stop this uh, in Nebraska offense, and it looks like the FSU offense is getting squared away. All right, first and 10 for Nebraska at the 20, of course. The one thing you want to make sure you do now with only 54 seconds left is don't give up anything cheap. Don't make it any worse than it is. It's still quite a ball game at 14 to 3. Jeff Quinn, who directed the, the Cornhuskers to a 21 to 7 win last week at Penn State, still in their quarterback, and Quinn hands off to Redwine. Redwine gets good yardage, but I believe the Florida State defensive line is giving him that 8-yard run up to the 28-yard line in hopes that... Uh, They'll just let the clock run out. We have a timeout call by Nebraska with 45 seconds left to go in the first half. And we'll keep it here. It's 14 to 3. And what do you think Bobby Bowden and his offensive brain trust is trying to do down on the field to regroup for the second half? I don't know, but what bothers me is the way that Nebraska hit those passes. Uh, it may be Bobby talking to the defense this time because although the defense had played well to start with, uh, they did have some breakdowns that cost them these two touchdowns. And it's Todd Brown on the last touchdown pass was as wide open as any receiver I've ever seen. You're watching Seminole Football, 1980 on WECA television, Tallahassee's 27 in Tallahassee, Florida. An exclusive sports presentation of Channel 27. And Jim, uh, we'll be on the road for our last road telecast. Come, I believe it's October 25th. 
in Memphis Tennessee against the Memphis State Tigers. That should be a good one too. Uh, it shouldn't be as tough as this one. <laughs> no uh, frankly it shouldn't. <laughs> but that's still a few weeks away. All right it'll be second out two yards to go for the Nebraska Cornhuskers after that eight yard pickup by Redwine. Nebraska called a timeout. Maybe Dr. Tom Osborne is going to put some more points on the board or try anyway. Here's Redwine with the ball. He's got the first down over the 30 yard line to the 31 making the stop on that play James Percy and that'll stop the clock while they move the chains. Gives me an opportunity to say hello to the Action News team Jerry Brown and Mary Ann Laughlin and Beth Campbell watching back in Tallahassee. Invite people to watch Action News at 5 30 and 11 weekdays. 29 seconds now and running the clock here at Lincoln and you keep thinking that uh, Nebraska is going to put it up and Quinn wanted to but then he says uh -uh, I'm not going to turn it over and he tucks it away and takes his uh, gain as slight as it may be of a, about a yard or so making the tackle for the Seminoles Scott McLean. Well they're not going to get another playoff Tom looks like we're going to go into the half 14 to 3. Yes, the clock running. Three, two, one. And that is the end of the first half of play from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. The score, Nebraska 14 and the Florida State.